welcome back everyone let's go ahead and take a look at the 2015 macbook air and see how the specific macbook holds up in 2015. now i do believe with this model there were two different screen sizes so you can get that 13.3 inch model and i believe there may have been an 11 inch model could be totally wrong but the thing with the macbook air was this was one of the last macbook airs that apple made for a few years then they switched over to those retina macbook airs and now they have the m1 macbook air and it's crazy because i would have never even considered buying a macbook air before i mean obviously we have these ones but i would have never really plan on using one until they made that m1 macbook air so i do think apple has made complete change to the macbook air lineup and i think they've done a great job right now and even with this macbook air i still think it holds up fairly well and it's still supported with software which is great i was able to install the latest version of software too which was a very interesting experience but i would tell you if you're in the market i'll probably recommend buying something like an m1 macbook air and kind of moving on from there that's kind of like the best way i would approach this but if you still have this one it may surprise you still because it's still kind of relevant. Now on the outside, you can see we have the aluminum build, very reminiscent of these older MacBooks. They look so good and they still perform, at least physically and visually, they still look very good. I mean, these things do not feel cheap. Apple has very rarely made cheap MacBooks, especially in the last decade. And with something like this 2015 MacBook Air, it still looks really, really good. The aluminum finish on the top looks so beautiful. You have that glowing, you know, Apple logo on the top too, which I miss so much. When you open up this specific MacBook, you can see that 13.3 inch display. Now, this is probably, it's, pr it's probably not its best thing about it. I mean, it's a display and it works. It definitely doesn't look that good though. You can tell it's very pixelated and especially with the newer retina displays. I mean, it, we're just so spoiled with these amazing displays we have now. We kind of forget about these older ones in 2015 with these MacBook Airs. Now with the MacBook Pros that even Apple made, even in 2012 the retina macbook pros those displays are beautiful with this 2015 macbook air doesn't really look like that so definitely keep that in mind now we do have this full-size keyboard on the bottom too which still looks really good you know i still think this is one of its biggest assets having a full-size keyboard like this with its clicky keys are amazing and when you look at the retina macbook airs apple made right after they removed this type of keyboard and i wasn't a fan of that they also made the trackpad much bigger and to be honest all the trackpads nowadays are kind of big still and i don't really like that i like that kind of centered macbook i kind of like the smaller trackpad that we had on these you know older macbooks but i guess you kind of get used to it there was no touch bar on this thing either which you know people probably prefer and on the side of these macbooks this is where we get the ports so on one side we did have the specific magsafe charger which is great we were able to just plug in the magsafe cord and kind of move on from there we also had a single usb port the usb type a port so definitely not that big full-size one but we did have that on one side and we did have a headphone jack as well and like i mentioned when you have these types of ports on this type of macbook it definitely makes things feel and look pretty good i mean you also had another usb type a port on the right side and you had a thunderbolt port as well so depending on which macbook you got like i mentioned you may have a little bit of a different setup depending on how old this macbook was but for this one you did have a decent port selection the macbook pro still had more but still i mean this was actually pretty decent for that time i'll definitely tell you with this type of macbook i think it looks great and i don't really have too much to complain about it for sure now on top of that when you power on this macbook you have a little bit of a different setup as well so depending on which model you got obviously you could spec this thing out the base here models apparently only had four gigabytes of ram which is actually pretty insane i mean that's a very low amount of ram to have nowadays the one that i'm specifically reviewing has eight gigabytes of ram and that is pretty much the lowest i would recommend on top of that it looks like you could configure these models up to 512 gigabytes of storage which again is actually pretty decent for that day but nowadays i mean it really doesn't make too much sense to get a macbook that has you know 128 or 256 gigabytes of storage that's a super low amount of storage and I would not recommend even looking at a MacBook like that. The bottom I would recommend is probably 512 nowadays, especially with how big these files are getting, with how big programs are getting. That's probably the way I'd recommend, especially if you're trying to keep a MacBook for as long as possible. Now with this specific MacBook, you did have that 1.6 gigahertz dual core processor inside of it. It was the i5 processor. So again, really cool. We had this type of capability. You could configure it up to 2.2 gigahertz on a dual core CPU with the Intel Core i7. So really cool that you had that capability too. But again, it's really really not a powerhouse machine with the macbook air lineup it was never meant to be you know to replace a macbook pro or to replace an imac it was pretty much focused on portability when you look at the side of these macbooks you can see how thin this macbook was it wasn't a thick machine it wasn't supposed to be like the it's main of 
focus wasn't power. Its main focus was portability. Nowadays, we do have the MacBook Airs that are slim and they're just so good looking and everything. But now, Apple kind of focused the performance. They really improved the performance on those machines. At this day and age, they sacrifice performance for you know portability. And I don't think I have a problem with that. I think that's totally fine. But I hope you know what you're getting when you're getting like a 2015 MacBook Air. There are way better machines out there nowadays. And especially in that you know performance segment, after installing the latest version of software on this thing, you can see how much of a toll you know these newer softwares are having on these older machines. I believe this MacBook Air is probably the oldest supported MacBook Air. I could be totally wrong, but again, when you're having a MacBook like this, you kind of know it's not going to be the most performance heavy thing. You know, for a seven year old machine, you kind of expect that. But my 2015 iMac, which is much more powerful than the MacBook Air, is actually doing really well on the latest version of software. So I'm really happy with the performance of that machine. But with the 2015 MacBook Air, I think it could be better. So again, if you're playing games and you're doing heavy intensive video editing and stuff like that, you are going to feel like this machine is pretty hot. There's also no fan inside of this machine either. So it's going to run pretty hot. So it's going to suck up a lot of battery. It's going to suck up a lot of performance. If you're on an older version of uh, you know macOS software, then you may get better performance, but at least on the latest one, it's giving me kind of a little bit of a different scenario, especially when I look at my 2015 iMac and my 2015 MacBook Pros. I guess I'm a little spoiled because those are a little bit more heavier intensive, you know, in terms of performance, but this one, it's a little bit of a different story. But the battery life has always been really good on these MacBook Airs. Apple did a great job on the battery performance of these machines, and I do think in this day and age, I think if Apple can keep going with this, you know, battery performance segment like they've done with the M1 MacBook Air, I just don't see how Apple could flop here. You know, they may remove the MacBook Air lineup in total just because it's just such a good machine for the entry level machine. And the 2015 MacBook Air was kind of like that last point. It was that last pinnacle from Apple where they kind of switched towards something like those, you know, thermal throttling with the touch bars with the, you know, faulty keyboards and everything. And this was one of the last, you know, MacBook lineups, the 2015 ones in general, where Apple really kind of focused in on what they had to do, where Apple really kind of peaked at for many years until recently in 2020 when they released the new M1 chipset, and then they kind of just went crazy there. So I'll definitely tell you when it comes down to it, the 2015 MacBook Air is a very interesting machine. You know, it's not a MacBook I would recommend using anymore if you have the choice, but if you're in the market and if this is all you have like if you currently own a 2015 macbook air or if you're in the market and you want to go buy a really really cheap machine i really don't think this is a horrible option you know i would tell you to kind of limit your expectations this thing in the future is probably not going to be getting many more software updates it's not going to be lasting really that much longer i mean it could get maybe one more mac os version but i really doubt it you're getting you know a good machine for the price tag if you were to spend maybe like 250 maybe 350 dollars on this thing i don't think it's that bad but do keep in mind it's not going to blow your socks off for the performance side or the battery life anymore it's probably degrade in the battery size department as well the best thing to do honestly is to if you own this macbook keep it but i'll keep your sights open for that m1 macbook air it's either between the 2015 macbook air or that m1 macbook air it's like two extremes i wouldn't really go for any of the ones in between i wouldn't go for the 2017s or 2018s whichever ones they are i would just recommend going up to something like that 2020 you know the m1 macbook air that's a very solid option in my opinion so that kind of covers it. If you guys have any other questions or anything, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that means so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, Sullivan.